like um, it is true or false. Um, when people disagree with me, I never take it personally and get angry. And you reference James chapter 1, verse 19, which reads, So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Okay, why don't we let Steve go first, since he got here, uh, uh, hasn't had chances to, yeah, so go ahead, Steve. Can you read it one more time? Uh, I was listening, but okay. I just want to hear it one more time. Sure. Um, when people disagree with me, true or false, when people disagree with me, I never take it personally and get angry. Ah, and you, and, and you read the, the verse, too. Yeah, James I remembered the verse. I, I, knew, I knew where the question, but there was something in the question I had forgotten what it was. And uh, do I, I think I kind of already answered that. <laughs> um, but I'll be a little more specific. Uh, yeah, I've, I've definitely gotten angry. Uh, and... Uh, you know, I, it's one of the things I, I don't like, and uh, I try to avoid at all costs because of my prior points, really. Um, and I have a hard time, I do have a hard time being one that's quick to listen and slow to speak. As many of you know, I do talk a lot, um, when I have something to say. Uh, but yeah, I mean, part of the reason why I, you know, took that long time away before from the Matthias stuff, oops, um, uh, to, whatever, uh, the prior issue <laughs> from a while ago that Luke referenced, uh, earlier tonight, um, uh, was because that's part of the reason why I stepped away was because I did not want to uh, cause further strife and contention among people. And I was seeing people hurt and the, the divisiveness of the argument going on. And, you know, I, I couldn't be there and not stand up for the truth of the gospel. And when you feel like, you know, uh, you're not welcome around certain people uh, and, and free to share what you believe or contradict someone. You know, sometimes you got to step away for A, your own sanity and B, to not make, uh, to not, uh, to not put a bad taste in people's mouths and worse, you know, I didn't want to be a part of, 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 further hurt to people um you know it, uh, you know sometimes sometimes the battle is fought on the sideline anyway and sometimes the battle can only be fought on your knees in prayer and so you know it it is what it is like that sometimes and yeah i know i've lost my cool sometimes um and quite frankly, it's usually been with other people who claim to believe in Jesus. And I've seen, I have witnessed more of that type of happening between, between Christians, those that claim Christ, than between Christians and atheists. No, no, though no, I'm sure there are some who would say the opposite and I'm sure that's true. Um, all you got to do is turn the news on today and you'll see how Christians are treated and, and thought of. But I really think when it comes to personal interaction with people, if, if we can do the best we can to be respectful and to show love to each other, and, you know, that, it goes a long way, you know, um, uh, this was a long while ago, but I was 
I had to uh, uh, get a ride uh, in one in a in another truck driver's truck to go uh, to go pick up another truck. This was uh, probably a year and a half ago. Um, uh, that company I worked at before the one I'm at now tells you how long it's been. At least for me, it does. So, um, but I ended up being, it was the night I was supposed to be on some broadcast and I had asked the guy, you know, and he wasn't a believer or anything. And he was totally cool with me doing my show from the passenger seat of his truck. And I just sat there praying, you know, he would, you know, that I would plant the seed just by being on the show next to him. And, you know, just by being respectful to ask him, we didn't really talk much about it, but, you know, we talked about how a lot of Christians aren't respectful. And I told him, I try to be respectful. You know, you believe different, differently than me. Okay. You want to talk about it? Okay. If you don't, that's cool too. And so that was pretty much much it. And I hope I planted a seed that night. So, you know, maybe I did. I'll never know. You know, I won't know until, until we get to heaven and maybe that guy will be there too. Um, so who knows? But that's the kind of thing. Yeah, I've definitely lost my cool. I can remember times, many times, especially when I was a kid. Oh, man. I would have screaming matches with people that weren't Christians. <laughs> I could see it in my mind, you know, but uh, that's that's definitely a thing. I've definitely done that. Um, and I've definitely had heated uh, discussions some Sometimes what sounds like angry discussions to others that are just passionate discussions where two people are very, uh, but there's no real anger and animosity. So, you know, uh, sometimes those discussions you should have privately, but yeah, it's, it's a tough one. We are all still human and we need to remember that, um, about each other and especially about ourselves that we can, that we can lose our cool and it's better to walk away than to do that. So I think with the verse, that verse is very important, especially in times where you're talking with someone who wholeheartedly disagrees with you, you know, uh, whether it be, a believer who disagrees with you on, you know, the gifts of the Holy Spirit or something like that, or with uh, an atheist or agnostic, definitely be slow to listen, uh, you know, or slow to speak, quick to listen. Um, and that's worth doing. And I know it's sometimes harder said than done. And I know that's especially true for me. So thanks. All right, thank you. Uh, Sister Lisa, James says that uh, be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to anger, but often uh, we, our default really is the opposite. We're slow to listen, uh, quick to speak and quick to anger. Lisa, Lisa, what's your answer? Still there, Lisa? I'm sorry, guys. Mic failure. Mic failure. <laughs> uh, can you hear me now? Yes, we hear okay. you. Your Apologies. Voice. I'm still learning this stupid meat thing. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, thank you, Brother Luke. Praise the Lord. Uh, okay. Uh, can I hear the question again was what I asked? Uh, okay. Question is, um, true or false, when people disagree with me, I never take it personally and get angry. Right. Never. Yeah. <laughs> never. Uh, never say never. Because, uh, well, we're human beings. So when we start with absolutes, I'm, uh, we're already in trouble. 
so that ha I would have to say that's false. I, I would love to say, oh, yes, no, I never. That would be a lie. <laughs> so, uh, no, uh, I do my best try not to. Uh, but but uh, one thing that has helped me be more successful more often times than not, can I, I'll, I'll, I'll phrase it that way, is to, uh, well, as I said earlier, the whole defer, pretend, you know, like how would I speak to my grandmother kind of thing. But the other is, hey, I, we, we don't really have skin in the game on, on this. And what do I mean by that? Which is, it's the Lord's salvation. It's not ours. And this has really helped me big time with, that whole legalistic mindset that Christians can develop, which is who am I to judge another man's servant? Now I can judge what they say and I can judge righteous judgment. Okay. But the whole judging people unto damnation stuff is, is retarded <laughs> in one regard, because I can't look into, I can't even look into their future and tell whether or not they'll repent and change their mind if they're wrong on something and all that. So you know, I have to defer to the Lord and say, you know what? Look, this is this is your thing. So that's why I say when you say uh, before I even open my mouth, I'm like, Lord, should I even say anything? What would you have me to say? OK, uh, and, and is now the time? Because, as I said, maybe now is not the time. So the whole the whole thing is the Lord's. It ain't mine. It's not my salvation. It's his salvation. And once I started realizing how little, if anything, ever I control, <laughs> and it's all in his power, I stopped worrying about so many different things that put pressure on me to feel like I had to do anything, especially like uh, realizing that some people plant a seed, some people water that seed, and it's still the Lord who brings in the harvest. Now he has workers that'll go out and preach so that that person can be received means born again, but we ain't doing it. It's all under the power of the Holy Spirit. So once I started realizing that, I started relaxing about it. I don't worry about it anymore. It's not for me to determine, do I have to preach to this person right now and convince them? So, you know, if if the Lord hasn't placed such an urgency in my spirit to reach them, then I don't worry about it. I just be the one who plants the seed. Or maybe I'm the one who's watering that seed at the moment. And then I'm trying to be connected to the spirit, to pay attention to what he's saying as to whether or not I'm the one that's going to reap the harvest that day. So I I don't, it's the Lord's. And once I did that, once I let go of the reins as far as this ain't my thing, this is his thing. So uh, that helped me big time. And and I could relax. I'm, I still want to be cognizant of when the spirit is moving. I want to be connected to be, uh, what was that? Uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I want to make sure that I remain open as a receiver to listen to the Holy Spirit so that I don't miss an opportunity that he would have me to say something. But at the same time, I ain't responsible. <laughs> it's, it's I'm responsible to be uh, submitted to him and to be aware of what he would like me to do. But this is his thing. He owns and controls it all, not me. So once I started realizing that this is all in his will and his power and his strength and his might, I stopped worrying about what Lisa needed to do so much, except to be sensitive. That's the word I was looking for to the Holy Spirit, to when he says, go ahead and say this right now. And like I said, you need to be sensitive sometime when he tell you, don't say this right now. So uh, th that's why I, this really this question is just to me, this 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 the first question just kind of re reiterated, uh, you know, but maybe this needs to be said twice. OK, so no, no problem. I think we all can work on this. It's not something that uh, is masterable in a day. <laughs> so, you know, it's not like it's not like. Excuse me, uh, you know, <laughs> excuse me, it's not like mastering some skill that can be done in a moment. This is this is something that's a lifetime that we have to do. I'm sorry, I need to drink some water. That's my answer.
Luke, you want to say something? Or I can give uh, my answer. No, I, I didn't know if she was just going to take a drink and come right back. Oh, or okay. okay, let's go on to, uh, to uh, Sister Angel. All right. Uh, so uh, generally, um, the question was basically uh, whether or not, you know, we, we take it personally when someone disagrees with with us. And I would say I'm actually I think I'm uh, I'm pretty good at not doing that. Um, uh, you know, it, it, it usually won't be the actual disagreement uh, that I take personally. It might be the, uh, the the way in which someone does it if they get personal. Um, I've always been pretty frustrated uh, by people's inability to actually argue the the matter itself, rather than rather than go, you know when they start to feel like they're losing ground, they 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 go low. They try to go you know go personal. Um, I've never felt really the need to do that uh, very often, uh, especially if that's not the matter at hand. If it's not a if it's not a you know uh, you know something to do with them personally, but it's actually like a you know, just something that we're disagreeing on. Um, but uh, yes, if, if someone's very uh, uh, rude in how they go about doing something, if I feel that they're acting in bad faith, uh, I take I'll, I will take that personally because um, uh, generally uh, I feel like if I'm able to, 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 to not do that, if I'm able to actually argue the, the issue at hand and, uh, uh, and argue it uh, exclusively, without um, low blows and resorting to dirty tactics to try to, you know, to try to, you know, score points that really are irrelevant to the, to the actual topic, um, then I think other people should be too. I feel the same way about, you know, like when people get crabby, you know, some people, they wake up crabby in the morning. And I used to have just so much anxiety and trepidation about uh, waking people up uh, uh, in the morning, even if they told me to, because, um, I notice a lot of people when they wake up, they'll just be just, uh, you know, nasty. <laughs> uh, and, 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 um, I never understood that because, um, generally speaking now, of course, uh, I'm sure there's, there's, you know, a few times my husband could, uh, could, could, uh, disagree with me here and prove me wrong, but generally speaking, uh, no matter, uh, no matter what's going on with me, whether I'm, tired or not feeling good I I generally generally am able to really not uh not take that out on other people now maybe my kids <laughs> unfortunately they might be the one exception you know I might be a little bit more um quick to, to holler at them or, or you know if they're being really uh rambunctious if I'm not feeling good but my point is is that um I, what I'll take personally is when people aren't aren't able to kind of um to remain uh to remain objective or to remain on topic when debating something, you know, without, without, you know, uh, you know, using ad hominems and uh, things like that, especially if I feel like they're, they'll do that when they're losing ground, when they feel like that they can't actually, uh, they can't actually win the argument on the actual merits of the argument, but, um, you know, they start wanting to just, to just win at all costs. And that really bothers me. And it's, it's always, cause I, I mean, you know, I, a lot of people, a lot of people act like that's an unavoidable thing when you get into an argument. But um, uh, in my experience, <laughs> you know, I've never had a problem doing that they can, until other people start, uh, start, you know, fighting dirty, at which point, you know, you know, then I'll start, you know, getting pretty nasty back if I have to, but, um, you know, not really that you ever have to, but uh, sometimes, you know, once, once, then the argument becomes, you know, different, the argument becomes about their behavior, not about the original topic uh that you were disagreeing on um but in and of itself somebody disagreeing with me or you know not not uh not holding the same view that i do no i don't take that personally um and uh, i feel like um a lot of people take it far too personally and they let their ego get invested in it and that that's when i get angry <laughs> i'll get pretty mad when i notice somebody's somebody's really fighting for their ego rather than rather than the actual subject because uh I just have very, I just don't have any respect for, for, for that kind of thing. Um, uh, I, you know, I feel like it's easy enough to, to argue, <laughs> to argue um, the actual, I guess you'd call it merits of the case. Uh, and I, I think um, it just reflects poorly on people's character when they can't separate out, you know, the disagreement from their ego and from having like a, a stake in it where, where they just, their pride won't allow them to lose. Um, 
But, uh, it, you know, so in the rare occasion that somebody actually simply disagrees with where I stand on a subject, I could, I could think I could honestly say, no, I do not take that personally at all. Um, and uh, I'm pretty laid back about things like that until, uh, until their behavior changes, until they start, uh, you know, I've, I've had people in the past, um, you know, when I was, you know, I won't name names, but I've had people in the past uh, do some very dirty things, you know, because they, they disagreed, <laughs> disagreed with something that I said. And, uh, you know, and, and then when, when, you know, they actually went toe to toe with me and I pointed out, you know, perhaps their hypocrisy um, and they would ask me for examples, you know, they would do something like, uh, uh, you know, challenged me to give examples. And then when I do, they'd block me or threaten to block me if I kept responding, things like that, like that kind of thing will really piss me off. And I may never uh, give that person another chance again, because that to me is just dirty, 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 especially among Christians. You know, I really do. Uh, I, maybe I shouldn't, but I do expect a lot more from people that uh, that know the truth, because to me that that seems like that should be a a very humbling experience. And sometimes I just I don't know. I, I know we all we all you know still have to carry around this flesh. I, I get that, but uh, to me, an argument is an intellectual exercise. So uh, I don't understand how they can divorce. Um, the humbling experience of, uh, of believing the gospel, especially when we're arguing matters, matters of, you know, doctrine, um, how they can divorce that from their actual conduct with other believers. Um, I, you know, so, so I would say, yeah, I, I don't, I don't usually have too much of a problem with that, but I will say, yeah, I think it's rare that you'll actually get into an argument with people where, where, <laughs> where the attacks don't become personal uh, pretty quickly, um, you know, at least on one side or the other. Okay, thank you, Sister. All right, Sister Heather. Well, I am in a very unique position here because um, Steve will relate to this. I grew up in Pennsylvania where we are very quickly misunderstood as being angry when we speak sometimes because Pennsylvanians are loud. <laughs> Um, I didn't know that. Yes, very, very, very often. Um, anyway, um, and then I lived in Puerto Rico for 10 years where you speak with your hands and your emotions and everything is very, there, there's a lot of feeling in everything that's said. So I've got both of these cultures in my background. And then I live in North Carolina where an argument ends with, Oh, bless your heart. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm familiar with, that Southern passive aggressiveness, yeah. Yes. Mm. So, but um, for me personally, I'm a pacifist, and I know I've said that a few times already, but I am. Um, so when there's a disagreement, um, especially about anything biblical, um, if it, as long as it's not, if, if it's about the gospel, absolutely, I will argue it and they will see the Pennsylvania and the Puerto Rico come out really quick. Mm -hmm. But if it's not about um, something that's essential, then I tend to, oh, bless your heart and back away because I don't want to have that fight. I don't want my emotions to get involved because do I take it personal? way too often I take everything personal and um I'm I'm probably the exact opposite of everybody else here tonight but I do I'm I I'm a very emotional person and I feel for my I feel things that that affect me personally and I feel things that affect other people I'm very empathetic um, you can ask my husband we'll be driving down the street and there'll be a homeless person there and I I'm weeping and like oh my my heart breaks just just watching driving past and not having anything to give them right that moment I'm, I'm a very emotional person so yes I take just about everything personal which is why um in my answer to the previous question I kind of avoid that kind of disagreements as much as possible because I know me and I know that I will get my feelings hurt either that or I will end up hurting someone else's feelings. And it's, it, it hurts my heart to think that I would do that, but I do. And so it, for me, it's just safer to 
pray that somebody more assertive comes along after me. <laughs> like just about anybody else on the panel can can come along after me and 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 clear up the disagreement, but I just that's not me. That's not my personality. Yeah, I wonder what people in Indiana are known for. It seems like the exact opposite of people from Pennsylvania. Because since I moved here, see, I kind of grew in Pennsylvania with the Midwest, I guess. And uh, uh, I thought it was a Midwestern thing. But, like, people in Indiana are very non-confrontational, very non, like, they don't like to make a scene at all. It's night and day difference from being down south. Uh, you, you talk about bless your heart at the end. But I've no, I don't know. I, I noticed Southerners, they're, I feel like they're uh, – they're quick to, they like, they don't have any problem causing a scene, let's just say. <laughs> yeah, I think some stereotypes are generally true because there's a cultural effect on people. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. Ben, ben, what do you have to say? Well, um, now that I'm a believer, I, I, I probably take it less personally than I used to, but, but I kind of see it like this. I try to see it simply this way. You know, if my argument is good, um, and they're, you know, again, if the argument is good and they have a problem with it, then the problems, they, they don't see it as I do, you know, uh, and I, you know, if I'm convinced I'm right, my argument is good, then the problem, it's their problem. So I shouldn't take it personally. If my argument is bad, then I shouldn't be arguing in the first place. And in that case, I should take it personally, but as a, a personal rebuke to myself. Um, and so again, that's just from a pure logical perspective. Um, but for me, you know, uh, in interaction, in person, person to person interaction perspective, if people are rude and whatnot, uh, again, if, if again, if my argument is good and I'm, I'm doing it rightly, you know, I'm, I'm doing it in, in fear and meekness um, or gentleness and meekness or, you know, uh, if I'm doing it righteously, then I, I again, the, if I, if, then the problem's with them and I shouldn't take it personally. But if I'm not, if I'm doing it, uh, you know, if I'm, you know, being wrathful about it or trying to, you know, tear them down, um, that again, uh, if they do, uh, if I, I should take it personally. And if I, if I do take it personally, I think that's a good warning sign for me, at least to say, okay, hey, you maybe should self-reflect and, and what, what, why, why do you feel bad about this? I think God, that's one of the reasons God gave us emotions. Um, and, um, so I, I pretty, I pretty much see it that simply. I mean, like, I, like, for example, um, the, with, with regards to this recent schism, you know, for example, I, I, I'm glad you clarified what the nature of the schism was. I, I oversimplified it. It was much more than just simply a matter of believing, uh, perpetual belief or perseverance of faith. It was much more than that. Um, and that's why I, that's why I thought, like I wanted to touch on earlier, that I think it's important to really draw these things out and draw out the logical conclusions because when you do that, that's when you expose the real problems, I think, which, which we did well. Um, and I already lost my thought. Um, but, yeah, I lost my thought. So maybe we'll come back to you later. Do you do you take things personal and get angry? That's the question. I, I try. Yeah, no, uh, no. I, I try not to. Uh, if, again, if I do take it personally, that's when I think uh, it's time for self reflection. Because if I take it personally, then, um, then I, even though they they may have a bit, be very personal in their attack against me, if if I did, again if I had the right motives and the right argument, then I really shouldn't take any offense. I just chalk it up to okay, well. We're we're into a, a real spiritual battle. There's pride that that gets to people in, in people's way, um, and there's a lot of that even among Christians. And um, and there's different spirits sit behind uh, the motivations of people. So I need to keep that in mind as well. You know, it's like uh, it doesn't do much good to be um, angry at the devil. It doesn't do any good. I mean, it, it, the only way. I mean, it, it does good in the sense that maybe you want to, you know, conquer him with the gospel. But uh, if that's if it motivates you that way, good. But that's not what motivates me. It's the, it's the, it's it's what because it's God's will for us to do. That's what that what gets me to do it. And also, obviously, concern for the lost. So um, yeah. So if it if I don't, I don't take it personally, if I do, uh, to me, it's usually a warning sign that I need to make some corrections. All right. Thank you. Well, uh, I know that the point was made that this is kind of a follow up or almost the same as the first question, but there, the, the, the difference uh, is um, the first question is how, how do uh, we respond uh, when we answer? Uh, and the second question is how, how, how do we feel? Uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, 
do we are we offended are we um hurt do we have hurt feelings do we get emotional do it does anger obviously enter into us uh so it's it's, it's more of a, a more, more of a, even a physiological effect where um so the to me the, the the first question i can do i'm pretty successful as i said i think i've recognize the importance of it and i've trained myself so now i've uh, developed it as a virtue and so i'm successful at um at uh, trying to disagree but prefacing it with well um that's an interesting point of view you have I, i'd love to hear more about it and this is sincere because i do always want to hear when dis someone disagrees i want to hear about it i want to learn about it because maybe i'm wrong uh, so uh, I, I can honestly say, yeah, it's interesting. I want to hear more about that. But but this is how I see it. So in other words, I'm going to disagree, but I'm not going to be blunt and offensive as I, when I give my answer. So I, I, I think I've, I've been able to, to conquer that and, and master that technique. But the, uh, the, the second question, not as well, uh, because... It's a physiological response. I mean, if, if someone, and I think uh, Angel's point is also very relevant. It's, a, it's, it's not even so much uh, what their position is or even what they say, but it's how they say it. Is it a personal attack? Is it, uh, uh, um, then, then of course, if it's a personal attack, if they're making it personal and they're trying to be condescending or insulting and like, you don't know what you're talking about and, uh, uh, you're ignorant or, you know, so, something like that, then obviously um, there is a reaction that you're not, you're not even in control of. It's just something that, that ha at least me, in my case, um, fortunately, uh, I've been pretty good at not um, uh, allowing it to be visible publicly. Uh, even, even in private conversations with people, sometimes I, I for the most part, people don't see me or hear me get angry and lose my temper uh even though there are times when i i am angry uh, i'll tell you what really makes me angry is not not the, the minor doctrines i uh, rarely do i get angry about that but it, when people start like what was going on in the chat room with the person saying that basically we have someone in the chat room now observe that that is uh, violating their, their own rule they're 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 espousing uh, a works-based uh, uh, salvation system that faith alone is not not uh, uh, enough. Uh, so when someone is is teaching uh, uh, the, the false gospel or a different Jesus, that immediately has a physiological effect on me, and and I can feel my blood pressure going up, uh, my face will get red. Sometimes I'll even start to hyperventilate, uh, but. When I speak, for the, I, I'm still conscious of how I want to respond, so I'm not violating the, the rule of the first question. But I'll tell you one thing that really was profound to me. Many years ago, I was having lunch with Bible Jim, the street preacher I refer to quite often. And I guess I was venting to him, and he saw that I was angry about something. And he looked at me and said, Luke, a dead man cannot get offended and i wow you were that was like a, a gut punch to me <laughs> yeah. it really it really uh made me uh evaluate myself and make me feel like wait a second if if i'm getting angry uh have i really died to self am, am i or i obviously i was in the flesh but um, so the, the, the better we get, and I guess the more, the more mature we get, uh, maybe we'll, we'll get more successful at not having that response, uh, the bad response where we, we get angry. But if, if we are taking things personally, uh, it's, it's, if it's not intended to be personal, if it's just a disagreement of a position, then it shouldn't be personal. Just because someone says, I disagree with you, obviously, I think I'm right, I think you're wrong. But that, that should not be any reason to be offended uh, or, uh, you know, think it's a personal attack. And then to get angry and say, I'm going to take my ball and go home, something like that kind of response. That's not the way we're, we should be dealing with these, these problems. Um, 
Okay, so I, I, I think that, that is the distinction between the, the two questions. Um, all right, who wants to go first on the follow-up? I guess we've answered it. We've um, exhausted the question, huh? <laughs> 